Hey everybody and welcome to Lex's World. Today I figured I'd discuss moonlight and the general impact of the moon on your cannabis plants. This is a topic that I didn't think I was gonna have to do until the question about moonlight specifically came up three times across the span of a month. So I realized that at least the theory about the moonlight is so out there now that it was worth addressing. There's a lot of people out there claiming that you gotta protect your plants uh, from at least the full moon uh, so that the light from the full moon doesn't, you know, uh, cause any kind of shock to your flowering phase or do something wrong to your plant. So I figured I'd address that. Oh, and today's episode, by the way, is sponsored and it's brought to you by TNB Naturals, makers of disposable CO2 systems for your garden, kind of like this one. And we're going to be touching on them in the near future, I think, as well, kind of in more detail in the whole CO2 thing. Anyway, back to the topic at hand. The moon itself, especially as far as its gravitational pull, does impact cannabis plants and all plants. The gravitational pull of the moon moves the tides of the oceans around, and it also affects the moisture that's inside the soil and other growing mediums, as well as the moisture that's inside the plants, and the plants have a ton of moisture within them. There are many cultures throughout history that have planted crops and harvested crops based off of the different phases of the moon. It's quite well documented. Cannabis growers who use moon phases to do their outdoor gardening uh, always mention that the biggest impact of the moon's gravitational pull seems to be on seedlings. Although this is just kind of a claim that's bounced around, I don't know that it's been proven for a fact. Now, as for any negative impacts from the moonlight onto cannabis plants, to get a feel for how significant moonlight is, you have to measure its impact onto the surface of the Earth in lux. Those of you out there who've watched my Light Spectrum Basics episode know all about lux and how important it is in actually measuring impact of light when it's traveling through a certain distance and hitting a surface. Direct sunlight hits the earth at over 32,000 lux, and it does so with a very full spectrum. Because of that, sunlight is kind of the perfect light source, and all of the indoor lighting just kind of tries to simulate sunlight. And even with uh, indirect sunlight on a bright day, you could still be getting 10,000 to 25,000 lux on the surface of the earth. Very, very significant. But when it comes to moonlight, well, when it's a full moon, it's 0.3 lux. And if the moon isn't full, it's even less than that. Hence, it's probably not enough impact to worry about when it comes to your cannabis plants. I know that this doesn't 100% refute the theory that moonlight could impact cannabis, but it certainly puts a gigantic hole in a theory that, as far as I can tell, did not originate from any empirical evidence. Furthermore, and very importantly, cannabis has spent thousands upon thousands of years naturally evolving both to moonlight and to starlight, and it used to do so in perfect darkness well before humans ever started lighting up the sky with light pollution. So it seems unlikely that moonlight could in some way diminish plant growth or shock it or confuse it in any way, even if the moon is full. So where did this whole fear about moonlight originate from? As far as I can tell, it originated in the 80s and 90s, and it mostly originated with the rising popularity of indoor growing, and tent growing in particular, where people began to be really afraid of light leaks, and so they kind of stretched it to mean that any light whatsoever is bad light that has to be eliminated. But when you look at the illuminance factor, the actual lux involved, that little pinhole in your tent uh, that's in a tent that's in a lit room is far, far more significant than the light coming from the moon. Also, the entire rule of no light, no matter what, under any circumstances, even for a few seconds, that rule is not as hard as it appears to be. Uh, definitely once you investigate it a little bit further, and those who've watched my episode regarding working with cannabis at night already know that. But on that note, if you found this episode interesting, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button, and we'll see you next time on Lex's World.